What's up guys, my name's Stu, and today we're going to talk about the Star Trek Online TFO Gravity Kills. Gravity Kills has a reputation for being one of the more frustrating TFOs in Star Trek Online, when in reality, it's really not that difficult. Most people go into Gravity Kills with the impression that they should just run in and kill everything in sight, which really isn't the way to go. The main objective of this TFO is to collect the Hawking Particles near the Black Hole and bring them back to the USS Jupiter. The Jupiter can then lower the shields on the three stations orbiting the Black Hole for you to destroy them. In this video, I'll show you a demonstration of Gravity Kills and give you some tips and tricks that I use to get through this TFO pretty easily. But first, I'll show you the ship I'm using as well. Before I get into the Gravity Kills walkthrough, I want to show you the ship I'm using and what I've done with it for the sake of this TFO. Because this TFO is pretty much all about picking up and delivering the particles, something with high speed and maneuverability can be very helpful, which means pilot ships are actually really helpful for this. The one I'm using for this video is the Fleet Nova Pilot Scout ship. I was originally going to use the Legendary Defiant, but one, I've used that one in a number of videos already, two, it's very expensive and I figured you guys would appreciate something more like this, and three, the Nova Science Seating is better suited for another trick I have for this TFO. The thing about this TFO is that there's a bunch of Zenkethi ships between you and the Hawking Particles you're supposed to be collecting, along with a giant black hole threatening to pull you inside of it. So one thing I like to do to deal with the Zenkethi is to use the ability Tractor Repulsors. This can be nice for helping to get the Zenkethi away from the Hawking Particles, and in some cases even pushing them into the black hole. I've also included Photonic Shockwave on this build because it's also another repel ability. Tractor Repulsors is more reliable for what I'm trying to do with this, but I had room for both so I figured why not have the additional repel. Because this is a pilot ship, I'm also using the trick I like to use to increase my crit chance on pilot ships, which involves the starship trait Synthetic Good Fortune, which comes off the Sea Store version of this ship, two seats of pilot team, and the personal space trait fresh from R&R. Synthetic Good Fortune gives you a stacking buff to control expertise and crit chance every time you use a pilot ability or a control ability. So with those two pilot team stacks, those will be able to stack pretty quickly, even more so with that personal trait which is lowering their shared cooldown. Additionally, Tractor Repulsors and Photonic Shockwave are also control abilities, so not only are you buffing them with that control expertise buff, but activating them will also contribute to generating stacks for the trait. The two seats of pilot team are also going to be helpful in this TFO because they buff your turn rate and your flight speed, meaning you'll be able to transport those hawking particles that much quicker. Now, beyond the adjustments I've made for this, this is just a standard beam overload build. Thanks to the Noah's 4-2 weapons layout and abundance of universal seating, it actually makes a pretty decent beam overload build for a science vessel. Now, you don't have to use a pilot ship or this setup for this TFO. You can easily rely on evasive maneuvers, deuterium surplus, and your competitive engines for your speed buffs. I just find that having the additional speed and maneuverability of an actual pilot ship to be helpful in finishing the TFO quicker. But you can get this done in pretty much any ship that has a decent amount of maneuverability and speed. Basically, I would just avoid using large cruisers for this. If you get thrown into this TFO during random queues and you're not in an ideal ship, don't worry, you can fix that. You can actually change your ship during the mission briefing. Just open up your ship's status menu, click Switch Starships in the corner, Select which one you want to use, and then load up the loadout you want to use. Now, let's move on to the TFO walkthrough. The first thing that'll happen after the briefing is the first wave of Zenkethi ships. It's a small wave, they'll be easy to defeat. Just remember to target the cruisers first, because they do have that invincible shield that they can put onto friendly targets. And that's not just for this TFO. Anytime you're fighting the Zenkethi, kill the cruisers first because of that shield that they can cast. Once that first wave is defeated, you'll be able to start moving particles from the first station to the Jupiter. Zenkethi ships will warp in to protect the station, and this is where those repel abilities will come in. You don't want to necessarily go in guns blazing in this situation. You're just going to get drawn into a fight with the Zenkethi ships. Just hit your tractor repulsor, pick up a particle, and get back to the Jupiter. Zenkethi ships will warp in to attack the Jupiter. The Jupiter can't actually die outside of elite difficulty, so don't really worry about protecting it. If you really do care about the option to leave one person behind to protect it, Remember, the more people not moving particles, the longer this TFO is going to take.
Once you've collected enough particles, the Jupiter will be able to lower the protective shields around the stations. Once the shield is down, you'll be able to destroy the gravitic anchors, and the station will fall into the black hole. And now you do the same thing with the next two stations. You can see here one person on our team making a classic mistake against the Zinkethi using Gravity Well. You generally don't want to bunch the Zinkethi up together, especially the cruisers, because you're just making it easier for them to buff and heal their surrounding allies. So unless you're using a very powerful EPG build, this is a bad idea. You can probably see now that the ships attacking the Jupiter are now cruisers instead of frigates. After each station you destroy, the ships attacking the Jupiter will become more powerful. The cruisers now because we destroyed the first station, and they'll be replaced with battleships when we destroy the second station. You can see I popped the DPRM here, not for its damage buff, but because of its hull regen buff. That hull regen is what makes the DPRM a great panic button. However, you could replace this with any large heal console or something that makes you untargetable. I died, it happens sometimes. The Nova is fast and maneuverable, but it is also pretty squishy. Those Zinkethi torpedo spreads hit pretty hard, and the guy using Gravity Well is definitely not helping the situation. Something to be mindful of is that each station is closer and closer to the gravity well of the black hole. It's not that big of a deal in the first two, but by the third one, you are pretty close to that black hole. So be careful when going to pick up particles, you don't want to get too close. I got lucky here because I popped evasive maneuvers and deuterium surplus at the same time, and I'm already in a pretty fast ship. And this is where I realized I forgot to pick up a particle. Oops.
once the last station goes down, that'll start a countdown for the Dreadnought to spawn. It'll show up near the Jupiter, so there's no need to fight the remaining Zenkethi mobs near the black hole. Even though you can clearly see me doing exactly that. I got a little trigger happy. When the Dreadnought does spawn, it'll show up with a mix of cruisers and battleships. Like with any fight against the Zinkethi, kill the cruisers first so they can't cast that stupid shield, and then take down the Dreadnought battleships. That is Gravity Kills. Like I said, it's not that difficult of a TFO, you just gotta remain focused on moving the particles rather than killing the Zenkethi. I hope you found this guide helpful, and if you'd like to see me do more walkthroughs of TFOs, please let me know down in the comments below. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe while you're down there, and hit that bell for notifications. If you'd like to support the channel further, hit that join button too. And yeah, my name's Stu, and I had to change my shirt because a small dog peed on me. And I'll see you guys next time.